Hey guys, it's Kevin again. This is my review for the season premiere, finally, after, you know, I have been hyping this up so much. The season premiere of The Vampire Diaries, season 6, episode 1, I'll remember. And guys, I have been hyping up this premiere for, for since I saw the first um, promo that came out. Ever since I saw that, I'm like, I can't wait for this season. And um, it definitely, this episode did not disappoint. This episode was absolutely amazing. And I want to say a couple things before we get to this premiere, though. The thing with this show is a lot of people have been complaining about it, believe it or not, which I do not see why you could be complaining over it when the show had such a huge twist that affected the show. It was literally a really good twist, in my opinion. I love the twist. So here's my thing that I realized. If you guys are watching The Vampire Diaries just because of Delena or Stelena, you're not going to be happy with the show. This is one of those shows where if you ship a character, you know, if you ship two characters together, they're probably not going to stay together the entire show, so you can't just, you know, watch the show to ship a character, So, and I definitely agree with that, so, yeah, that, that's pretty much what I have to say about that, and let's just um, get to this episode because it was amazing, and this episode really shows how everyone deals with grief, you know, how everyone deals with grief, and how, you know, the different ways people deal with it. I thought that was really cool, and it's just going to be an amazing season, and I just can't wait, so let's just get to it. So we see a lantern buzz and flickers, and the episode started really weird. We see these two random people kissing in a tent, and they stop when they hear a noise, and the girl is telling her boyfriend to go check it out now, because he's, but he's scared and tells her to do it. She creeps out of the tent, looks around, she walks until she finds the lantern, slaps it so that it comes on, screams, and she sees Sheriff Forbes. And she busts them for drinking, says she's calling their parents, I thought that was funny to see. Um, but, you know, it seemed like something else was going to happen, and the girl ends up um, falling quiet, her boyfriend's calling out for her, uh, but she is all bloody. She tells him to look up. He does. And then someone pounces on him and he screams. So obviously there's someone in Mystic Falls that, um, you know, is either a serial killer. I was just like, that was a weird way to start the episode. It made sense why they decided to start it like that later. But at this point, I was just like, I have no idea why they just, why they just decided to start the episode that way. I could not figure out why they did that. So... Then we see Elena's monologue, and Elena surprisingly is in a good mood. You know, she's saying it's a good day since summer's done, she's starting sophomore year of college, and she picks a major medicine and is getting very serious about school, and she's quizzed by a doctor on rounds and is praised for reading ahead, and it looks like, um, but it looks like she's preparing some sort of spell while she's doing this. And she comes in and she finds Alaric mixing blood, which... I gotta just, I still have to applaud them for bringing back Alaric. He just, it was so great that brought back Alaric. I was so happy they did that, and that was one of the best decisions the show has done. Um, she says she had some on the way over, and she says it's weird, and he asks if it's coming back from the dead or being a vampire, and she says it's him being her professor. And then we get a really interesting twist here, and I really like this narration that Elena was saying. You know, she talks about how Mystic Falls now has a rule. It is off limits to those with fangs, which means that the crime rate is down completely. It's down. There's not as much, you know, crime going on there. So then we see Jeremy making out with some random girl at home. And she now Elena thinks Stefan is looking for a witch that can help chase him down the dead. But he is actually daylighting as a mechanic. He is taking the job as a mechanic probably just to forget about his brother, because, you know, Damon meant a lot to him, so obviously he's really upset about that, so that made sense, and I thought that was really sad. So Elena's continuing her spell, and she's lighting candles, and we find out that Caroline has dropped out of college, but Elena wants her to come home. And again, that was a really interesting way that I, I wasn't expecting that um, for Caroline to drop out of college, but, you know, that was definitely interesting. She is out on a picnic with her mother, you know, Sheriff Forbes, and uh, Tyler's ha hassling her also. He's in college and says she should be there. Elena nags her into attending next day's game. And Caroline and her mom are talking about how to break the anti-magic border around Mystic Falls. Because they don't want that to be there forever, obviously. So they want to find a way to break it. So her mom says she needs to go hang out with her friends. And Caroline says Elena is in denial about Damon's death. Because basically what happened was she... When Bonnie died, you know, she was just crying hysterically. 
but she hasn't really, and you could tell in the episode, she's not really, you know, acting like Damon is dead at all. In fact, in my opinion, at this point, I was just like, why is Elena not really acting like Damon is dead? Like, Elena felt, definitely felt like she was hurt by this, so I don't understand why Elena's acting so cool about this, so I agree what Caroline said there, because I myself was wondering, why is Elena acting so cool about this? So, um, we basically, you know, see that, um, Liz tells her that Elena has experienced more loss than anyone she knows, which is true. She's used to it, but this was someone that she truly cared about. This was her boyfriend and the guy that she really wanted to spend the rest of her life with. And she's handling it in her own way. And Liz gets a text that there are two teens with neck wounds at the hospital. She goes to check on it. And Caroline tries to hand her the picnic basket. And she's then burned by the warding spell. And I thought those scenes were really, really well done because Mystic Falls is their home. And... Because of them trying to destroy it last year, there's no supernaturals allowed. Now, not, not only are vampires not allowed, no witches, no mythical creatures at all. Because they basically tried to destroy Mystic Falls last year. So, obviously, there's a lot of, there's, you know, this is sort of their revenge on that. So, I thought that was interesting. Then we see Elena finishing her spell, and we find out that she was actually talking to Damon about her day. And that's what this spell is for. Whatever this spell is doing, somehow she can see Damon. And we can see, you know, he has her to tell him again about Alaric being a college professor now in class. And um, that was interesting what happened there because I was just like, okay, I guess she's hallucinating Damon. And it makes sense, though, because she really just can't, you know, admit that Damon is dead. She can't get over his death, and she needs to, and she's not. And I don't really know... Why she's not, but she's not. So I thought that was interesting. So then Alaric, we see him being a college professor now. I love seeing Alaric being a college professor. It was great to see him teaching. It's also great to see um, sort of a father figure for Elena. Even though he's not exactly her father, they're more like friends now. It still is cool to see someone give Elena really good advice. So Alaric is teacher, teaching about a cult, something like that. Um, you know, an occult class. And he says it means hidden, and he says today they will be discussed resurrection, and Liv ends up giggling, and this is the first time we see Liv, and he asks her issue, and she says it's ironic, and Tyler scrambles in late and annoys her. She magics his textbook open to the correct page, and Alaric whispers to Elena that he can smell her drink from there, and he says it's not cool to drink blood when the whole class looks like blood sausages to him. So... You know, I thought that was a good line. And she apologizes, and then after class, she finds Luke. And Luke, I honestly didn't know how to feel about him in the last season. I didn't. I didn't know if I liked Luke. I didn't know if I liked him as a character. However, in this episode, I liked his character. I like seeing him. Um, I like seeing him in this episode because we find out that he's actually the one that's making these drugs for Elena. He's been giving he, her um, psycho tropic herbs and he says he thinks he needs to cut her off and he tells her he broke coven rules to get them to her and make alaric his um daylight bracelet you know he just he's obviously very upset about this um you know you can see that luke is kind of annoyed about it and i like seeing again i like seeing luke kind of play a different role because Liv and luke they were annoying last year this year they're not as annoying i like that they've made them better characters overall so then Stefan's annoyed that his paycheck was docked $200, and his boss, Dean, says a customer says he dinged the hood of his classic car. Stefan said the wife did it, and Dean says he's calling his best customer a liar and tells him to suck it up. And um, there there wasn't really much to that scene. I thought that was an interesting scene. I'm wondering if we're going to see more of his boss. And Stefan and Alaric talk, and he tells Alaric his source hasn't turned up into info yet. You know, he's still making them think that he is hunting for Damon and Bonnie, when really he's not. He's just out on his own. Probably because he just, he wants to be alone. And that's another way people deal with grief, is that they want to be alone and isolated from other people. That's another way to do it, and... That was definitely interesting what happened there. I wasn't expecting that, and I, I thought that was definitely very interesting. So, basically, Alaric meets with Caroline at the diner. She's reading all of these books she can get to help her break the spell, because that's what she wants to do. She wants to break this spell, and he gives her a new one. But she's not having any luck, and she asks about Stefan, and he asks what's up. And she says Stefan never said goodbye to her. You know, he, he he didn't say goodbye, which she's surprised about, because they're best friends, obviously. He would tell her anything. 
So he just disappeared without a word and isn't answering her calls. And Alaric says he doesn't, he just doesn't want to bother her with bad leads, but Caroline isn't having it. She leaves and Elena then calls Matt and she asks why Jeremy isn't taking her calls. He's not answering her calls. And we basically find out that Jeremy is basically a couch potato now. Ever since Bonnie left, he's been a complete couch potato. He's playing video games. And I really like what Matt said, you know. He says that he understands he really loved Bonnie, but he needs to get over it. He needs to get off his ass and stop playing video games. And he ends the call and he tells Jeremy to stop hooking up with random girls and playing video games all day. It's not the answer. And I agree with Matt is saying. But Jeremy asks if he should join the guard to protect against nothing. And he says no more magic means he's not a hunter anymore, which is true. That was Jeremy's purpose. He was the hunter. He was the one that hunted for vampires and, you know, those kind of people. But now he's done that, he has no purpose. So Matt says he's not much of anything anymore either. And Matt hasn't been much of anything. I mean, really, Matt, I the thing I like about Matt is even though he is mortal, he's still a very interesting character because what they do with his character is just very interesting, in my opinion. And I thought that was really cool. So Elena then shows up to Luke's room, and this was a very tense scene here. He tells her he can't help her anymore. She asks if it's because she said she needs more blood, and Luke says he's not a drug pusher. He's not one to do that, and she says he's her friend. She says it's his fault that Damon is gone because he stopped the spell, which is true. He stopped the spell. So she's rifling his room and says she needs to see Damon, and she's not asking again. She slams him against the wall, and he thinks she's acting like a drug, a junkie, which she is. She's acting completely like someone who wants drugs. She needs these drugs because that's what matters to her right now. So, Elena's then driving, and she sees Damon again. She sees another flash, you know, she sees another hallucination of Damon. And she's telling Damon she wants to set Alaric up with someone from the hospital. He tells her he loves her as she asks how long you wait after someone comes back from the dead before thinking, fixing them up. And he also reminds her that he's dead and she's turning into an insane blood addict, which she is. And she turns up the radio and tells him that's not what's going on. And then Alaric bumps into Tyler and he's yelling at him. And, you know, Tyler is just really pissed off this whole episode. Really, Tyler is in this really bad state where he's just pissed off. It makes sense. Tyler's human now. You know, he's human and... um. He is still a werewolf, but, you know, he, Tyler's obviously very pissed off at what's happened. So, because, you know, he died and then he was brought back to life, so he's kind of pissed off at this point. So, Lark asks if he should be drinking this close to a full moon, and Alaric is worried he's going to re-trigger his, were, his werewolf curse. And Alaric takes his drink, and they both look at Liv, and he laughs and tells Tyler that she is so not, which is true. She, I love what he says, he, you know, he says, she is so not into you. And Alaric thanks him for the beer, walks off, and then we see Stefan. And Stefan is with this new girl, Ivy, and I don't know if I trust this girl. I really don't. I feel like this is going to end up like in Witches of East End with what happened with Killian and Ava. I feel like the same thing is going to happen with Stefan here. Um, you know, she says she's just trying to get to know him, and he tells her he knows all about her, rattles off a bunch of info, even tells her that he's a vampire, which I was just like, what? Like, why would you tell her that? And I thought that was very surprising that he just randomly told her. He's like, hey, I'm a vampire, by the way. And, um, you know, she doesn't really believe him, so he, you know, she tells him he's annoying, he tells her he likes her, they kiss, she smiles, lies back in bed with him, and that was definitely really interesting. So then we get to the pep rally, and there's booze flowing, there's tons of beer and things like that, and Alaric has blood in his flask he's nipping from, and we see this girl Joe come over. And she introduces herself, she works at the medical center, and tells him she's glad to see another adult. And she asks for some of his drink, but says he's a germaphobe. And he says he has to make a call. And I like this little, I guess, relationship, I'm, I'm assuming, because Elena wants him to have a relationship. So, I don't know if this is going to work out for Alaric. I don't know. I honestly don't know if right now is the right time for Alaric to have a relationship. I don't know. Do you guys think Alaric is ready for it? Because I honestly don't know if Alaric should be in a relationship right now. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know. Um... But he leaves Elena a message telling her he's lost his game and he needs her there. And Elena sees a car on the side of the road and she pulls up. She's still talking to Damon and she was looking for a fresh blood bag when she spotted her. 
And this is when we find out that Elena is actually the one that, you know, she, at first it looks like Elena's just going to give her directions, but then she ends up literally biting this girl three times, and we find out that Elena is actually the girl that is um, the one that attacked those two teenagers in the beginning of the episode, which I thought that was a really cool twist, because again, another it shows how she's dealing with grief. And Damon's reminding her she has killed several people, and... Caroline then shows up, and she is just shocked. She never would have thought Elena was like this. Elena's basically a killer now, so I agree. We know that she basically is a killer. And Elena's distracted. The girl runs off and is on the other side of the spell, so they can't get her to wipe her memory. And Elena tries to grab her, but burns her arm and has to stop. The girl is then walking down the street with a bloody neck, scream for help. And Elena says she just lost control, and Caroline asks if she's the border lurker her mom has been looking for. And Elena admits she's been using witch herbs to see and talk to Damon, but it makes her thirsty. And, you know, Caroline tells her she tried to grieve him, but she couldn't. And she says she feels like she's gonna die. And Caroline tells her that she gets it, but says there are better ways to get through this, which is true. There are other ways to get through this besides just feeding on people. She's constantly feeding on people, and she needs to stop. So Caroline tells her what she's doing is not working, and she says she'll call her mom and get her to fix this, but says, Elena, she needs to go hide because... People are going to find out, and if people find out, it's not going to be good for Elena in the long run, because, one, she's killing people in Mystic Falls when, you know, well, not necessarily Mystic Falls, but she's killing innocent people, and two, she's going to definitely, you know, her mom is on that, you know, the hunt for who is doing this, and, you know, if her mom finds out Elena is doing this, I don't know if her mom would necessarily kill Elena, but, like, I think definitely some bad would happen to Elena if her mom definitely found out, so that was definitely really big there. We then see the girl staggering into town, crying for help, and we see that Matt finds her. And some others come over, and she tells him that a girl bit her, and she says she needs to find a girl. And Matt says it was a dog. And Liz pulls up, and Matt loads her into the car. And Tripp tries to get more of a statement, but Liz tells him to back off and let her do her job. And Stefan then gets a call from Elena, but he ignores it. His phone's ringing again with another call from her. He finally takes it and asks what's going on. And you can see that Stefan, again, just wants to be alone. He's being very distant. He doesn't really want to talk to Elena, Caroline. He doesn't want to talk to any of them right now. Probably because, again, he just wants to be very distant because he just can't get over his brother's death. And she says she needs him to give her hope that he's going to find Damon and bring him back. He says not yet. And he basically just tells her that she can't live forever without him. And she needs to say goodbye to him. She does. She needs to say goodbye to him. And I agree with that, definitely. So... He hangs up on her, and she's crying. You can see that she's really upset, and the crowd is now in full swing before the game. Caroline calls Tyler, tells him about the herbs that Elena has been taking and is bloodlusting, and he asks if she's okay, and she says she's a mess, and Tyler says he'll deal with Luke. And then Matt takes Sarah, the bite victim, to the country lane, and tells her that he's been attacked like that and hasn't gotten past it. Now, Sarah doesn't really trust him. She doesn't know if she should trust him because of what just happened. And he tells her he's died and come back and bitten and lost all his loved ones. And Sarah says she can't trust anyone, then turns to run, but Caroline is there and says that's not wise. And Tyler finds Luke at the game and confronts him about messing with, his, with her brain. And he asks where Elena is, and Tyler says she almost killed someone. He tells Luke to stay away from her or face the consequences. So, that was definitely very interesting there, what happened. And, um, you know, I, I thought I thought that was really big. So, a lark then comes up, knocks him off of Luke. There's, he looks like he was about to, like, beat him up. That was really big. I didn't know what he was about to do to him. But, basically, um, Tyler stomps away, tells Luke to tell him what that was about. Elena drinks more of the herb concoction. She tells Damon she knows he's not real, and he tells her that she can't throw us away just because of her phone call with Stefan. She says this is making her reckless, and she's hurting people. And we find out that these hallucinations are actually her subconscious. That's what this is. It's, you know, one of them is saying, move on, and the other is saying, no, don't move on. And he tells her if she wants to move on, to move on. She says she never got to thank him for save. And this was just such a good scene. Nina Dobrev's performance in this scene was so well done. I love this scene. You know, she tells him how she never got to thank him for saving Alaric, Stefan, and Tyler. And she thanks him for giving her everything she ever wanted. Love, passion, adventure. And she says... There's nothing more she could ever want except for it to last forever. She knows this is the last time she's going to see him. She tells him this is goodbye. She says she loves him, but she has to let go. She steps back, opens her eyes. 
but he's still there and tells her she's still holding on. She tells him he said goodbye. She said goodbye, and he asked how long before she goes running back to Luke, and she says she's not going to. She's not going to do this whole drug thing anymore because she knows that it's making her into a killer, and Elena obviously does not want to be a killer. So I definitely felt Elena made the right decision there. Again, Elena's not stupid. Even though people say that she is stupid, I personally feel Elena's not stupid. She has a brain. She knows what she's doing. She just at this point wasn't thinking because her boyfriend died and she cared about him very much. So she says, you know, she he tells her he she will feel her agony and torment forever. She knocks over the candles, throws things bursting out of the stained glass windows. That was just huge what she did. And she just, she's so upset. She falls to her knees sobbing and Damon touches her shoulder, holds her while she sobs. And it was just, it was really sad to see because you see that while she wants closure, she doesn't want to say goodbye to him. You can just tell that, you know, because again, Damon is all in her subconscious and what she is thinking is really what Damon is saying. So that was interesting. You know, that was definitely a very sad scene to watch, a very hard scene to watch, and just, you know, really hard to watch. So then Liv finds Tyler, and she is just, she's pissed at Tyler because he almost got into a fight with her brother. And she calls him a douchebag cliche. He says he got out of control, and she tells him Elena's emotionally blackmailing him. He reminds her that they lost people because of Luke, and she says a lot of them got their lives back because of her and Luke. And she tells him to st lay off Luke, and he says he will. And he tells her four months ago he had all these powers, and now all he has is rage, and he's trying to deal with it. She goes to walk away. He asks why she treats him like that. She asks what he'd like her to do. Gives her a look that makes it clear what she wants from her. And I really feel there's a lot of tension coming between the two of them. I don't know what's going to happen. For a, while, a second, I thought they were actually going to have sex. Like, I, I honestly don't know. You never know in these kind of shows. You never do. Um, So, I feel that there is, like, some sort of romantic tension there. Not, I just feel there's a lot of sexual tension between them. I feel like they're trying to set up Liv and um, Tyler. Which, honestly, is good because I like the banter between them. I do like that. So then we see a perfect way to end the episode. Well, it seemed like this was going to be the end of the episode. Caroline's leaving another message for Stefan, and this was just such a powerful scene. And she basically sums up what's happening to everyone. You know, she says it was not a good day. She says everyone is drifting apart and is pretending that they can get through this alone, which is true. They're all just drifting apart. And she says Elena's gone. You know, she's a very different person. And we see Elena holding one of Damon's shirts, and she's crying. She says Tyler's trying to outrun his werewolf gene, and Matt and Jeremy won't leave Mystic Falls. Which I still don't get why they're not leaving Mystic Falls. I don't get that. And she says she thinks they may hope that they can never find a way back in, you know... She thinks that they're never going to be able to find a way back in, which if it is true that this is the final season, that's a perfect way to set it up. So we see Jeremy drinking very, you know, we see Jeremy drinking outside. Caroline says they need each other and need to be together. She won't stop calling him. She says she won't stop until he says he'll help her fix it. We see Stefan look at his phone, sees a missed call and message from her, and he literally breaks his phone because, again, he just wants to be alone. Just like Caroline said, it perfectly, that scene perfectly summed up the episode, that everyone just really wants to be by themselves. They don't want to, you know, have someone help them with this. They want to do this alone. So... Then we get a really good scene here. I really like this. Elena asks Alaric if he likes being a vampire. And he says they can talk about it after all that crap is out of his system. And, um, you know, she t he tells her he actually doesn't like being a vampire. And she says she doesn't like it either. And that kind of makes me think there's going to be a way for her to, I don't know, maybe not become a vampire, maybe become human again. I honestly don't know. I, I feel like she doesn't want to be a vampire anymore. But the thing is, she can't really get out of that. She says the good part was the promise that love could be eternal, and she had that with Damon. So that means the rest of eternity, she'll have a hole in her heart where he was supposed to be. That's the only reason she really liked being a vampire. And she says she knows how death works and says moving on is a lie. And she says if she ever wants to fall in love again and make eternity bearable, she needs him to do something for her. She says he can compel other vampires since he was created by the original vampire spell. And she has him to compel her to forget that. And I love what she says here. I was not expecting this at all. She tells him that she wants him to basically make her forget that she ever loved Damon, so that way she can officially have closure with him. So I thought that was just huge what happened. Now, I thought she was going to say 
can you please help me get rid of, you know, the, the drugs? I thought that's what it was going to be, that she, you know, help her get over her addiction. But nope, she asked him to help her get over, you know, forget the fact she ever loved Damon. And that looked like it was the end of the episode, but then at the end we see Damon making pancakes and coffee He while rock music is playing. Takes the food over to Bonnie, and he's made fang faces on the pancakes. She says she hates it, he says he doesn't care. Reads the paper, and they share a nice breakfast. So... That's basically how the episode ended. Very weird way to end the episode, but again, it goes with the perfect, you know, thing with everyone in this episode is separate now. Everyone is separated. Everyone's doing their own separate thing, and I just love where this is going. I love everything about this premiere. This premiere is just fantastic, and if this really is the final season, they've set it up perfectly. You know, they can't go back to Mystic Falls. Jeremy and Matt are not leaving Mystic Falls. And now, Elena and Alaric, I think this is going to be very sad to watch, definitely. I don't know if this is going to work, because the thing is, Damon, there's been rumors that he might end up coming back. So, I don't know if Elena's actually going to go through with this. You know, do you guys really think Elena's going to go through with this? I honestly don't think she's going to, but we'll have to see what happens there. Um, Caroline trying to find a way to get back to Mystic Falls. I don't know if they're going to be successful. I honestly don't know. There's that big force field, so I don't know if there's a way to break it. We don't really have a villain yet for this season, which I honestly don't feel we're going to. I don't know if we're going to have a villain. We'll have to see what happens there. Stefan being very distant. I like seeing that. I like seeing that he's being very distant from everyone. He doesn't want to really be around anyone right now. That girl that he's with, though, I just... That girl that he's with, um, Ivy, I don't trust her. I just... I don't trust her. She There's something off about her. I just... I don't trust her at all. I do not think that she is a good girlfriend from I don't trust her at all, pretty much. Um, Alaric now want to be a vampire. I thought that was interesting. Tyler's rage with Liv. I do feel they're trying to set a relationship there, but you can see that Tyler is just so full of rage, and I really hope Tyler finds a way to control his anger. I agree with Alaric. He needs to control his anger, and he needs to realize that Liv wants nothing to do with him. Even though he's trying to flirt with her, she really wants nothing to do with him. And as far as Alaric and... Um, Joe, I like them together. I don't know if they're going to start something that we should... They only had one scene, but apparently she is going to be a love interest because I read somewhere that she's going to be, so we'll have to see what happens there. Um, and Damon and Bonnie, I don't know where they are. Apparently in the next episode, we're going to find out where they went to because, again, the episode literally just ended with them going somewhere. We didn't know where they went to, so I don't know where Damon and Bonnie went to, but I guess we'll just have to see what happened there. But... Um, yeah, so I guess that's it for this review. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really want to talk about. Um, did I forget anything? Oh, Sheriff Forbes. I don't know what's going to happen with Sheriff Forbes. I, I think Elena's done with the whole um, killing people thing. Do you think Elena is done being a killer? Do you think she's done with killing all those? Well, almost killing them. She didn't really kill anyone, but she almost killed people. But um, that's basically it for my review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is going to be an amazing season. Ugh, I can feel this is going to be the best season. I can't wait for this season. Let me know what you guys saw this episode. Um, what do you guys think of this season in general? I think it's just so, so amazing, and I can't wait to see what they do with the rest of this season. That's it my review. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in my next video, which will be my review for tonight's episode of Girl Meets World. So Because it is on, um, actually, on Thursdays instead of Fridays. Disney scheduling, whatever, but I'll see you guys for that review, and, um, yeah, so I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.